Shalom shalom dear listeners of Kanguka my name is Chris Ndikumana today is Friday today i feel led to explain once again the importance of the blood we often say that the blood of Jesus washes away sin but many people don't understand that i want to explain why the blood has so much importance it all started in the old covenant in those days when the children of Israel sinned they would bring animals to the priest and the blood of those animals would be shed It's through the blood that was shed that they received their forgiveness. So every year they would shed more blood so that their sins could be forgiven. It didn't matter if they brought a perfect lamb, the blood of that lamb wasn't enough to wipe away all their sins. They had to come back every year. Some people who lack understanding still use the blood of animals. That's because they don't understand why Jesus went on the cross. Many people don't understand why Jesus was crucified. When he was was on the cross people asked him how come he didn't save himself and come down from the cross if he was really the son of god they were asking him why do you accept to be beaten but jesus was beaten because he accepted to be beaten it was god's plan that jesus would be beaten and shed his blood hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says that according to the law almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission some people still don't know why jesus shed his blood yes they saw movies showing jesus on the cross some feel pity compassion they ask why did they treat him this way why did they beat him but it was necessary that Jesus would shed his blood so that you and me can be forgiven of our sins if you living a sinful life let me tell you that there is blood that was shed so that you can be forgiven no matter how bad your sins are In old days they had to bring animal blood every year because it couldn't wipe away sin once and for all but the blood of Jesus was shed once and that was it those who still shed the blood of lamb so they can be forgiven they don't have a revelation about the work that Jesus came to do on the cross Jesus shed his blood once and his blood is still enough today if you bound by sin whether it's lying or fornication or jealousy or masturbation or murder or you've aborted multiple times don't let certain lie to you no matter how bad your sins are there is power in the blood of Jesus in order to shed his blood he was beaten he was stripped of his clothes and he was naked he wore a crown or thorn he was hurt he was pierced by nails he felt pain he was thirsty his back was lashed with a whip he was severely beaten he was hurt very much he paid the price so you and me can have a access to eternal life when you refuse to repent you basically saying that his blood was shed for nothing you saying that he died in vain but he died so you can be forgiven i want you to know that forgiveness is still available to you maybe you're not working with god anymore you used to pray and serve god but you quit some of you who are listening to me used to pray you used to serve god but you have backslidden you've returned to a life of sin you back to stealing you back to sexual immorality you back to lying but let me tell you that there is a voice calling you right now and it's telling you that Jesus wants to forgive you his blood can wipe away all your sins once you repent when God the Father looks at you he sees you through the filter of the blood of Jesus it means that he now sees you as a righteous person you become righteous the blood of Jesus covers you it justifies you is through the blood of Jesus that you accepted if you want to be forgiven and become a new creation if you want a new life and you want to be reading the book of life and be saved you can kneel down right where you are and call on Jesus so he can forgive you and cleanse you with his blood if you need assistance from a man of god you can give us a call at plus +2567813773337 Now in the second portion of the broadcast and we go into continue the teaching on Thanksgiving. If you new to the broadcast, you can listen to what we've already covered by consulting the archives. 
This teaching started on July 20th. I'm going to pick up from where I left off yesterday. The whole week, I've been talking about the power of not forgetting what God has done in your life. There's power in remembering what the Lord has done. I want every listener to know that whenever you go before God in prayer, you should offer words of thanksgiving to Him. Your prayers should always include thanksgiving. Some people can spend up to four hours in prayer without offering any words of thanksgiving to God. I remember one person a long time ago, he could pray for four hours. He would make supplications to God and talk about his problems, but he didn't give thanks a lot in those four hours. If your prayers are lacking thanksgiving, you're missing a crucial part. If you care deeply about your prayer life, you need to make sure that it includes thanksgiving. Give thanks to God for what he has done for you. Give thanks thanks to God for who he is. Give him thanks for his majesty. God should see a thankful heart in you. You need to remember what he has done. Never forget about it. Yesterday, I was talking about the story of 10 lepers who came to Jesus. They stood at a distance and asked him to heal them and Jesus told them to go to show themselves to the priest. As they went, the miracle occurred and all 10 of them were healed of leprosy. You can find this story in Luke 17 from verse 11 to 18. Verse 15 says that when one of them saw that he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice he glorified God. He spoke of his majesty, of his love and mercy. But it was only one of the ten men that were healed that came back to praise God. In verse 16 we see that he came near Jesus. Before his healing he had to stand at a distance, but now he came near Jesus because he was healed. When he came back to Jesus, he no longer had leprosy, so he was allowed to get near other people he could get closer to Jesus without fear. So he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus and he gave thanks to him. Verse 16 mentions that he was a Samaritan, he wasn't a Jew. In verse 17, Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Then he asked a very important question. He said, Where are the nine? I want you to understand that this story isn't just about the ten lepers. It applies to all of us too. Only one man out of ten came back. So Jesus is asking where are the nine? That's because he knows that he healed ten lepers. Even today, God is doing many good things to many people. If you have food on your table, it's because God's feeding you. If you have a place where you can sleep, it's because God provided it for you. If you are working today, it's because God gave you a job. God is providing in many ways for billions of people on this earth. But let me tell you that in the same way that one man out of ten came back and gave thanks, I think that maybe only 10% of those billions of people come back to give thanks thanks to God. So God is asking the same question that Jesus asked in verse 17. God is saying, I have blessed billions of people where I do 90%. Why do I only see 10% who come back and give thanks? I want to ask every listener to make sure that you are in those 10% who remember and give thanks to God for what he has done. Don't be part of the 90%. Don't be like the nine men who didn't return. They thought that they no longer needed Jesus since they were healed. They obtained what they wanted from him so they just wanted to go back to their life. They were living in hiding because of their disease. Now they wanted to go back to their families and their jobs. They wanted a return to normal life so they forgot to give thanks. Only one man came back to give thanks. In verse 18, Jesus said, Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He meant that the nine men who didn't come back were Jews, but the only man who came back was a Samaritan. Remember that Jews and Samaritan were enemies, but it's the Samaritan who came back to give thanks even though he wasn't a Jew. In verse 19, Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Jesus was was talking about his salvation because his body had already been healed, his faith had saved him. The other nine lepers were only healed physically, but this man had also received salvation and eternal life. The lesson we should take from this story is that when you come back to God and you give him thanks, you receive even more than he has asked for because you've touched the heart of I am. There is still more to say about this story. We will continue on Monday. Have a great weekend. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.